Okay, let us take the next one, question number 43. Let u cap that is u1 i plus u2 j plus u3 k be a unit vector and w cap as given 1 by root 6 i plus j plus 2 k. Given that there exists a vector v vector such that mod u cross v equals 1 and w cap dot u cap cross v vector equals 1. Which of the following statement is are correct? So, let us start this one. w cap dot u cap cross v equals 1. So, clearly the product the dot product of two vectors is 1 meaning that w cap equals u cross v because w cap a unit vector mod of u cap cross v is also one meaning it is also unit vector when you take the dot product of the two you get mod w mod u cross v cos theta equals 1. So, clearly these two vectors are equal. So, from here we obtain u cap cross v vector equals 1 by root 6 times i plus j plus 2 k. Now, let us assume v vector as x i cap plus y j cap plus z k cap. right? So, from here we can get u cross v equals determinant i j k u cap that is u 1, u 2, u 3 x y z equals 1 by root 6 i cap plus j cap plus 2 k cap. Right? Simplifying and equating coefficients of i j k on each side, we can find here from i as u 2 z minus u 3 y equals 1 by root 6, u 3 x minus u 1 z equals 1 by root 6, u 1 y minus u 2 x equals 2 by root 6. So, this is clear. Now, looking at this system of equations, let us using the Kramers rule, we can form say d as 0 minus u 3 u 2. From the second one, we get u 3 0 minus u 1, then minus u 2 u 1 0 which is skew-symmetric matrix determinant. So, the determinant of skew-symmetric matrix of order 3, this is simply 0. Similarly, we can find dx, dy, dz, dx that is 1 by root 6, 1 by root 6, 2 by root 6 and rest of the elements will remain same as from this one. Expanding, we will obtain it as u1 by root 6 multiplied with u1 plus u2 plus 2 u3. Right. Similarly, we can find dy and dz. In case of dy and dz on expanding, we observe dy comes u2 by root 6 multiplied with the same factor and dz as u3 by root 6 multiplied with u1 plus u2 plus 2 u3. Now, it is given that there exists a vector v, meaning there is no case of no solution. Since the determinant formed by the coefficients is 0, so the only possibility we are left with that this has infinitely many solutions. For infinitely many solutions, dx, dy, dz all must be 0, right? all must be 0 simultaneously, we simply observe the common factor u1 plus u2 plus 2 u3 is going to be 0. Because if I take the other one, it is given it is a unit vector, so it is not possible. So, here we observe u1 plus u2 plus 2 u3 is 0. Now, looking at the options, there is exactly one choice, no this is not correct. There are infinitely many choices for such v, yes this is correct. 
if u cap lies in the x y plane in the x y plane meaning this is not available so u3 is 0 if i put here u3 as 0 i obtain u1 equals minus u2 so modulus of u1 equals modulus of u2 so yes option 3 is correct fourth one that is d option says if it lies in xz plane meaning if i put y equals 0 that is the part u2 equals 0 that gives me u1 equals minus 2 u3 that is mod u1 is equal to 2 times mod u3 which is not there so from the given options b and c are correct so this is clear okay let's move to the next one Okay, let us take the next one that is question number 44. Let fx equals limit n approaching to infinity, some expression is given for all x greater than 0, then we have to choose from the given 4 options. So, we will be taking this one towards the definite integral, limit n approaching to infinity, this n to the power n can be taken into denominator of this n factorial by writing 1, 2, 3 up to n. Each of these terms can be written as x plus 1 upon 1 by n, x plus 1 upon 2 by n and so on because we need the terms like x plus r by n form, 1 plus r by n form. right dividing by one two three up to n n n n up to n multiplied with x square plus one upon one by n square x square plus one by two upon n square and so on till the last term which is x square plus 1 by n square by n square whole to the power x by n fine let us consider this term as fx now taking log on each side we can write it as log fx equals limit n approaching to infinity x by n multiplied with log x plus 1 by r by n r is 1 to n minus log x square plus 1 by r by n square the same way as we have done in the numerator right minus log r by n for this third term. So, let us put a bracket for this whole as r is from 1 to n here it is 4 by n square or 2 by n whole square term as mentioned in the question. So, we finally obtain limit n approaching to infinity x by n multiplied with summation r from 1 to n log x plus 1 by r by n minus log x square plus 1 by r square by n square minus log r by n. We can rewrite this term as x integral 0 to 1 log x plus 1 by t dt minus integral 0 to 1 log x square plus 1 by t square dt minus log t dt right 
combining using the property of log we can write it x integral 0 to 1 log t x plus 1 divided by t square x square plus 1 the term t is automatically cancelled out we can see here this is t x plus 1 by t this is t square x square plus 1 upon t square and this term was simply t so we, this t is cancelled now we have the term log f x is equal to x integral 0 to 1 log t x plus 1 upon t square x square plus 1 dt this is clear in order to simplify this integral we can put let us say t x as z so that we can write x dt is equal to dz hence this function log f x can be written as x times integral when t is 0 z is 0 when t is 1 z is x 0 to x log 1 plus z upon 1 plus z square dz by x so this x would be cancelled later if i differentiate this one in order to look at the options part i obtain f dash x upon f x equals log 1 plus x upon 1 plus x square we have to talk about f half f1 relation f1 by 3 f2 by 3 relation and so on we obtain f dash x upon fx equals log 1 plus x upon 1 plus x square if i consider the interval 0 to 1 we can clearly see log 1 plus x will be greater than log 1 plus x square meaning this term is positive fx is already there so we can say f dash x is positive meaning f is increasing similarly for the interval 1 to infinity if i consider log 1 plus x is less than log 1 plus x square meaning that f dash x is negative or f is decreasing for the interval 0 to 1 function f is increasing meaning as x is increasing the function's value is also increasing so f1 will be greater than f of option a is not correct f1 by 3 is less than f of 2 by 3 yes this option is correct third option which is f dash 2 this is dash given in the question paper f dash 2 less than equal to 0 since in the interval 1 to infinity function the function's derivative is negative so clearly we can see that the third option is also correct fourth one we have to talk about the ratio f dash 3 by f 3 as well as f dash 2 by f 2 from here we can find f dash 3 by f 3 as log 1 plus 3 upon 1 plus 9 that is log 2 by 5 similarly f dash 2 by f 2 can be obtained from here as log 3 by 5 so clearly the second term is greater than the first one so option d is not so from the four options we can see b and c are correct one so this is clear okay let's move to the next one